Hello, it's Thoughts on Thursday, and today it's the third and final video in the mini-series on translation. Welcome, and if you're new, I'm Dr Gareth Popkins. Here we talk about language learning from many angles. It's methods, it's my own projects, it's a bit of language vlogging, and interviews with inspiring language learners and movers and shakers from the world of language learning. So if you haven't yet subscribed for the vibe, please do. In the first video in series, I said that although translation had gone out of fashion, it's sort of coming back in again, because people are realising that it's a great way to tackle your weaknesses in vocabulary, grammar and style. It can really focus in on the gaps in your expressive power, if you like. And when you make mistakes when you're translating, there's nowhere to hide, you're going to really notice them, and that will help you to remember. Translation can also be a useful skill in its own right. Now, it's no substitute for practising the core skills of lots of listening and reading input and lots of output practice, writing and, of course, speaking. But as an additional skill and an additional activity, mediating between cultures, which is sort of what translation or interpretation in its oral form is, is actually a pretty useful skill to have. Now, in the second video, I was talking about then what should you translate, how should you translate it, and when. And I said in terms of what, choose text that are at the right level for you, so at or just below or just above to stretch you a bit, your level. And choose text that aren't too long. As to how, we'll go in both directions, from the target language into English, that's decoding, and then after a gap in time perhaps, do the exercise again, but this time recode, that's to say, go back from English into the target language, and you can then check your translation against the original that you did a little while earlier. And that way you're building in a bit of spaced recall activity into your language learning as well, returning to the same material, pushing it through your brain yet again, which really is a great way to reinforce memories and to take learning forward. And I said it was a good idea to work with perhaps reading passages, I said not too long, I'll repeat that, that you're using in your course book or other materials that you've been looking at already as part of your reading practice. So once again, you're getting this spaced returning to the material and spaced recall of stuff. So that's the way to go, I think, and that can work at all levels. And the focus today then is on a few ideas for how and how much you should use translation as a beginner, as an intermediate learner, and finally, as an advanced language learner. As a beginning language learner, familiarisation and memorisation are the name of the game. Translation can help you with these. If you're a total newbie to language learning, then you might not yet really have realised that one language, its individual words and its phrases do not map directly over into another language. What we're always doing, really, is translating the underlying ideas. Now, a dog is a dog in any language, of course, but some words which have cultural baggage with them, such as the word friend, for example, can have a different range of meanings, imply a different level of intimacy in different languages. These things have to be learned. More basically, perhaps at beginning level, the underlying structures of a language can be very different. So English, for example, is a subject verb object language. The subject comes first, then the verb, then the object. The man bit the dog. If you start learning Welsh, you find that the verb comes first in the sentence. Bit, the man, the dog. And in Japanese, the verb is always at the end of the sentence. Doing a bit of translation of short sentences can help reinforce your awareness of these fundamental differences. And as for materials, it can be great to use dialogues from your course book or learning materials if you've got them, because if you want to speak, then focusing on short, useful dialogues is the way to go. Translation, again, can help reinforce your uh, learning or your uh, noticing as well of those basic structures and vocabulary, of course. It's not about getting it completely accurate at this stage. In fact, as a beginning language learner, of course, a lot of the time you have to make do with a gist and you have to guess meaning. And of course, you have to be very, very comfortable with making a lot of mistakes. It goes with the territory. That's the way you learn. So remember that if you are going to do some translation. 
When you start to hit the intermediate levels in language learning, it's all about increasing your word and phrase power. And translation can have a role to play here. New words and phrases are coming thick and fast at this level. So once again, doing some translation exercises can reinforce what you've learned and get you noticing things that haven't yet sunk in or new stuff, points of difference between the target language and your own language. You're getting deeper into the spirit of a language by this stage, and so having to move from one culture to another, if you like, can be really useful exercise. Again, you should be still working at this level with graded material that could be from your course book. It's a great way to reinforce what you've covered in the course book or other materials you've been engaging with, perhaps a magazine article you've been discussing with a language exchange partner, for example. Once you're an advanced language learner, of course, you need to be attuned to finer shades of meaning and differences in a language. And of course, you want to be very, very accurate too. Now, the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, C2 level, actually says that differentiating the finer shades of meaning, even in the most complex situations, is one of the things that they're looking for. Translation can really help you here, because if you're trying to translate, for example, into the target language, there's a dog. It makes a noise. It's not just going to be barking. It might be whelping. It might be whimpering. It might be growling. You need to start to know and understand these differences and to be able to express them readily in the target language. Don't run to do that. You should maybe sprint to do it, or do you race there? Now, mistakes when you make them at this level are really going to hurt because you've been working for so long. I know from experience how frustrating it is still to be making them. But when you are, translation will flag them up perhaps in different ways from a pure written composition exercise in the language. Either way, once the mistake's been flagged up, it gives you a chance to focus on why you've got it wrong. Is it remedial work you need to do on some basic mistakes, which is sort of fossilised errors? Or is it actually some of the finer outer uh, reaches, if you like, of the world of Russian aspects or tense differences between English and German? Whatever it is, if it's flagged up, you're going to notice it and then you can work on it, get back to your grammar books or talk it over with your language teacher. Now, at the advanced level, of course, you can move to work with translation from native texts. And that, of course, is what you should be aiming to do. Now, if you're still at the C1 level, there are probably textbooks out there that you can use if you're using a major language. Once it gets to C2, it's harder to find materials, the market is smaller, and anyway, you're supposed to be working just unable to cope with native level materials. I would say choose stuff that relates to the target culture. So take a text in Russian, in my case, for example, about something to do with Russia, or something general, so a technical topic, for example, the space race or something like that, the environment, and work with that rather than working on something that's really connected with a culture other than the Russian. Because after all, you're likely to be wanting to talk about international subjects or to actually integrate in Russian culture. And this was my feeling when I was preparing actually for my C1 Russian exam, the TRKI third certificate exam, and I was using this Russian prose composition book. Uh, it's an old one, Boris and Christian, and it's actually uh, a book of texts in English for translation into Russian. So it's not actually prose composition at all, I don't think. The problem was that the texts here are very much related to Anglophone culture. So there are, for example, extracts from Mark Twain's Adventures of Tom Sawyer, which I was then, tra then translating into Russian. And while that's useful once you're at the boundaries of C2 and moving to a level of becoming perhaps a professional translator, or working as a conference interpreter or something like that, where you want C2+, I'm not sure how much sense it really made for me still at the C1 level. For example, there's an extract in here from Upton Sinclair, a mid 20th century American author writing about Henry Ford. And it had in it also uh, archaic vocabulary in English. For example, the horseless carriage as an early reference to the motor car. 
Now, at some stage it will be useful if I can say that sort of thing in Russian, but everything in its time. I would prefer, as a lower advanced student, still to be deepening my knowledge of my target, in my case Russian culture. But do think about that, and maybe at the advanced or the lower advanced levels, find texts which are originally in Russian, translate them into English, and then, then translate them back again into Russian for this sort of uh, two-directional uh, recall and um, manipulate, manipulative linguistic practice. I think that's the way to go. So that's the end of this mini-series on translation. We've gone round the houses, I think, pretty thoroughly in the topic. I think translation can have a good role to play, providing your expectations of it are proportionate, and that you're getting a lot of input and a lot of output practice in the language as well. It is an additional tool, and nothing more than that, but it can be an extremely powerful one. That's my view. Let me know what you think. Have you used translation yet? Have you been translating from a course book? Or have you found other materials where you wanted to do some translation? Let me know about it in the comments below. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the vibe if you haven't done already. Throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell, and share the affair. See you next time. Bye.